this is what the deal is. We're going to get a group together. We want a core think tank group here in Fort Wayne. Now, this is the thing. I don't care what, if, if you think that you're worried about what somebody else is saying, stay your butt at home. We don't need you here. If you're worried about what your wife is going to do, stay at home. We don't need you here. If you are not man enough to be out there and you think this is about gayism and all that kind of stuff, stay your butt at home. We don't need you to be here. Be strong enough to tell them up front. This is about our community. What we need to do in our community to start taking our community back from all the irrationalism that is going on within the, within the, uh, the community. We need to start putting it back on a, on, a fun, on, on, a, on a level to where when we want to walk down the street at 12 o'clock at night with our wife, hold our hand, her hand, talking with her and all that kind of stuff, we don't have no problem with nobody will drive by shooting at us or something. We, if, if our children want to sit outside on the front porch at 9 o'clock at night and, and, and just look at the stars or something or communicate with the other neighbors or something like that, uh, and they can do it without fear of somebody shooting them or something like that, you need to go at them the right way. But you got to be blunt. You have to be blunt. What does that do? Who is he to tell me to stay at home? Afraid. Is that what he, he, he trying to call me chicken or something? It's a mindset. What they got, when they got that kind of mindset, they're going to show up and they're going to be like, um, what you mean if I'm a chicken and stay at home? What you mean if I'm worried about what the white man is going to say, stay at home? What, what, what's that all about? If you're worried about them, stay at home because we're not worried about them up in here. We're going to say what we're going to say and we're going to say how we need to say it and that's going to be point blank to the point. Okay, so but what do you say to the people, to the blacks, who say we've talked enough and, um, and you know, we don't, we're not, we're not going to do anything unless there's jobs. I mean, you know, they, they, they start making demands again to, to uh, discount or nullify what if the initiative want, is. If you want jobs, if you want jobs and you don't, you want to do something. Well, you know how you get a job in. You create a job. What do you like to do? Blacks are falling farther and farther behind, and you can't wait on legislation or some white person to save the day. And um, it has to be an internal look and an and an internal initiative to save the day for blacks. They got to do it themselves. Well, then, what's the problem? Willie Lynch. Um, you know. I know all about that Willie Lynch mentality and everything. But it doesn't matter about it, the Gentile in no form whatsoever. They can sit up and try to push whatever agenda that they want to push out there. Our agenda should be focused on what we need to do here and then start doing something about it. Yes, I am. I'm, 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 and until I'm, we do, nobody else is going to step up. I've seen cases where, where a white person almost just pushes the button, and this black person, my God, they, they just go nuts in praise and self-subjugation. Now, I'll tell you the reason why they do that. Because they've been taught that this white Gentile called Jesus Christ is their master and creator. That's the reason why they go that whole route. The good Gentile named Jesus Christ, who is their God and creator and savior, is the reason why. That's the reason why their heads are so messed up. You were talking about brainwashing, or oh, if you'd had the real time on it, I would have got to this. But the brainwashing is because they started, number one, at home, being sent to church, to Sunday school all the time, to get the wrong information about who, what, when, and where. In doing so, they were brainwashing to believing that this white boy, Jesus Christ, was their soul master, which meant that all white people is your soul masters. They've been taught this in school. Everything that they've seen on television that has been good, everything that they've seen in the school books and everything, uh, historically and all that, always about white folk and their so-called goodness to the world. Not getting the story that they have stolen, killed, uh, uh, just raped through their history. Not just women, but countries. Same thing they're doing in Africa right now. Still raping Africa for her minerals and everything. 
Now they got the Chinese over there raping them for their minerals and so forth, the gas in the ground and stuff, that those Africans should be get, be able to get out themselves, but no, they can't because they got people blocking them from doing it. So all these different things right here when it comes to so-called black people, this is how we get blocked out and everything because we're not open-minded enough to understand these things and see what's going on. Here in this city, they run every two, two, four years, whatever it is, to vote for a mayor. When are you going to have a black mayor down there? What difference is it going to make when you have one? Who's going to pull his strings? Who's going to tell him who's going to win and where to do? you got a person sitting on city council right now who, in all circumstances, ain't doing nothing. Because if he was, he'd be pushing for a lot more to go on over here. All these different things I see going on around this city and the lack of doing because of everybody's worried about who's going to be doing what, who's going to get what, and all this kind of stuff. You don't need to worry about who, who's going to get what. What you should be doing is helping them to get there so that they can help you to get yours. Collaboration. Collaboration. Every other race in this city collaborates together amongst themselves and they get. People have been having the same issues with pastors since we were kids. Long before then. And uh, so there must be something to that. Mm -hmm. And the pastors come along and, and they perpetuate the same thing because they learn from pastors before them and they all keep doing the same thing. Well, and it goes, they're getting the same responses from the people. It is because they have learned the game of pimpology. It's as simple as this. It's a game of pimpology. In order to keep... Let's look at the game of pimpology. I'm going to be explicit about it to a degree. In order to keep the ladies in line, you have to beat them and control them. Mentally, emotionally, sexually. Take that and take it to a preacher. In order to control his people, he has to lie to them, control them, and beat them. How does he do that? Lies to them by giving them a religion that's not theirs in the first place. Now, but is there any chance that, that the pastors would disagree with you? I don't care. No, no. I mean, disagree to the extent that that they want to call you wrong, so therefore, as you call them lying. Well, you know how you work that? It's like this. I'm one of those people that would reach in and grab my Bible out, put it on the table, I'll say, now show me in there. Here's a $100 bill. You can show me where and they told you to form a religion, you can have a hundred dollars. Show me in your Bible where it told you to form a religion, here's another hundred dollars. You can have that two hundred dollars. Matter of fact, if you really show it to me, I'll let you have that three hundred dollars right there. That's three hundred dollars. Show me in your Bible where it told you to form a religion. There ain't not one preacher on this earth that can reach in there and tell that lie. Because they know if they do, they're going to expose what they have been doing all their lives, the lies they've been telling, because it's not there. There never has been. The Bible is against all a man's religions, all of them. It never taught man to be religious. It taught man to worship only one individual. And I was a creator. It didn't teach them to worship John, Peter, Paul, Luke, Matthew, Mark, or any of the rest of them. It didn't teach you to worship Jesus. None of that's in there. That is all man. It didn't teach you to celebrate Christmas, Ishtar or Easter, Mother's Day, Father's Day. It didn't teach you to do none of that. All of that is religious dogma. And because they cannot prove that, I'll sit down and talk for a minute day of the week, and, and then once they get through with trying to find a way out of that lie, I'll bring question number two. Why do you collect tithes every Sunday or two or three times a week? 
Let me explain to you why you don't. Because you came from the people. 